Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with another detailed weather forecast as the Deep South gets ready for more significant rainfall that will likely lead to some flood concerns with some very warm temperatures that will continue across the West. So in today's weather forecast, we'll break down all those details. So looking at your precipitation forecast on the GFS model for this afternoon, we can see where we have our next shot at some severe weather, especially over North Carolina. Carolina and portions of Virginia, we have a little bit of shower activity moving across the Great Lakes region, such as Wisconsin, but overall, the weather pattern today is going to be a lot more quieter than what we had earlier this week when we had multiple days of severe weather. So now going forward into tomorrow afternoon, showers and thunderstorms do develop across western Texas into the Edwards Plateau as well as the New Mexico region including for Colorado, and yes, we could be looking at some snow for the highest elevations. We're not quite in the peak of the summer season yet where we don't have snow in the higher elevations, so if you're doing any skiing, that's going to be interesting for May 12th or for May 11th, getting some snow out there, and then we might get our next severe weather event um, in the next 60 hours, but this does not look to be nothing like what we had just a few days ago when we had our high risk of severe weather in this um, region of Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas. Instead, we are seeing a marginal to slight risk for some severe weather for Sunday. So nothing big, but more rain than anything is what we're going to be seeing. And then that system kind of moves across the country by Monday on the 13th, where we do have some showers and some thunderstorms. Some of them could be severe down here in southeastern Texas into Louisiana, also into Missouri, as well as Arkansas. We might get some strong thunderstorms, as well as into the upper Midwest, where we might have to watch something closely. And then on Tuesday, on the 14th of May, we have this line of storms that does gallop its way. So another one of those squall lines, by the way, which brought 80 plus mile an hour winds across Mobile, Alabama last night. That was pretty frightening and pretty concerning to see such wind damage with that Boeing line. Something similar here setting up possibly for Tuesday and Wednesday next week as that kind of moves eastward as this upper level low also moves in unison to the east north easterly direction and that moves out followed by maybe another outbreak of showers and thunderstorms no not a severe weather outbreak but another round of intense storms possibly by wednesday and thursday next week and that will bring more heavy rainfall for the deep south and also for the midwest so kind of propagating weather pattern here for much of next week, it looks like, according to with what the GFS model is showing. And then that will continue all the way through the end of the forecast period for the end of next week through the 18th. Just in time for Memorial Weekend, you might get some showers and storms there for the Northeast. But that's 195 hours out, so there's a lot of uncertainty. So, with that being said, there's going to be a lot of rainfall that is anticipated with this propagating weather pattern. More of a flood threat than a severe threat for the next, say, seven days or so. Look at the deep south here. You could see as much as four to eight inches of rainfall over the next seven days. So in, a, in, in contrast, that's about an inch to maybe a, uh, an inch and a half of rainfall per day in an average standpoint over Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and northern Florida. So tons of water falling from the sky. And so there's going to be a lot of flood problems down here over the next week with as much as, say, two to four inches per, well, more like two to three inches of rain across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, where you all need the rain really bad. So you're finally getting some moisture with uh, possibly about an inch or so of rainfall across portions of the Appalachians, the Northeast, and the Upper Midwest. Now, as far as the flood threat goes, we're definitely looking at some flood concerns with this. Now, this only goes out to three days, but I can tell you right now, day four and day five are all slight risks for heavy rainfall and flooding for the Deep South, according to the Weather Prediction Center. So keep that in mind. Those will probably get upgraded to a moderate risk in later outlooks. Uh, you don't see that very often. And so prepare for the worst, folks, for some significant flooding 
and some uh, river flooding, small stream flooding, urban flooding, street flooding, that sort of thing. So this is the day two outlook from the Weather Prediction Center, and there is a marginal risk for heavy rainfall. This is for uh, tomorrow, especially for Central Texas, for uh, Northern Texas, as well as Eastern New Mexico. So again, some flood concerns are expected. And then day three really is when it begins the big part of this. Look at this. We're definitely looking at a lot of flood concerns over Central Eastern Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi with a marginal risk for heavy rainfall and flooding over Oklahoma and Central Tech, or Central Kansas, that is. But again, in later outlooks, this could get upgraded to a moderate risk. Another thing that you're going to also have to contend with is some humid, hot conditions as well. Some very warm temperatures are expected to develop across the Deep South, but especially across California and the Desert Southwest, really going to get hot. Today is the start of it, but really tomorrow is when we're going to introduce some really hot numbers over California and much of the Intermountain West, including for the Pacific Northwest. So this is for today, and you can see temperatures across the Central Valley in California, anywhere between about 90 to 95 degrees. If you're in the desert southwest, we're looking at the same thing uh, in the low to mid 90s. And then, of course, for portions of uh, if you're in, say, Florida, you're looking at some mid to upper 80s and mid to upper 80s across southern Texas. But overall, not too terribly bad as far as temperatures go um for the midwest you can see um in the high plains temperatures ranging in the mid 60s mid 70s whereas if you're along the the washington oregon coast you're gonna have temperatures in the mid 80s today so it's gonna be a really warm day and then tomorrow same thing really warming up even further for portions of the pacific northwest as that ridge really builds in and then going forward for your daytime highs uh we're looking at some 80s across the upper Midwest and also for Florida. Look at this, 100 degrees. I'm not sure if I'm seeing that right. Yeah, that's 100 according to the GFS model. With humidity that high too, we're gonna be in the, uh, it's gonna feel like 110 outside. And then for Southern Texas, also right around 100. And look at the desert Southwest, also 100 degrees too. So some very warm days are ahead. And then this is going to continue all the way through much of next week, where we're going to have some really warm temperatures, especially over Florida, where it could feel like 102, 105 degrees, perhaps. With temperatures still on the warm side over California, where we might strive for the mid to upper 90s, according to the GFS model. That could continue for a while. Look at this, 104 degrees in Bakersfield and about 104, 105 in the desert southwest. It's definitely going to feel much warmer than it has been in a long time for the west, especially with these temperature anomalies. Check these out. These are your temperature anomalies, departure from normal in Fahrenheit. Temperatures could be anywhere between 15 to 25 degrees above normal over Washington and Oregon, 10 degrees above normal. But look at much of the midsection in the eastern seaboard. You're going to have temperatures anywhere between 10 to 15 degrees below average for this time of the year. It's really going to be across the northern tier of the United States and across the west. You're going to really feel the heat. It's going to feel very uncomfortable out there. And that's because, again, that ridge of high pressure. But it's really next week is when the heat could build back in across the west yet again. Temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above normal. And then look at this. For Texas, you could have temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below normal. How about that? So a whole contrast difference between the Midwest and the, the, um, the, Midwest and the west where, look at this. You might see temperatures almost 30 degrees above normal by the middle of this coming week. So really warm, definitely. And even warmer, look at this. Temperatures could be 35 degrees above average over Oregon, over Washington, and California. So definitely a big heat wave is coming for these areas. And this could continue all the way through the end of next week. I'm afraid we're going to have a lot of heat problems. That classic la nina pattern where we have cool out wet uh cool out we uh, i can say this right cool weather out east and warmer weather out west let's just put it that way in simple terms it's how it's shaping up it looks like throughout most of the forecast at least through the next seven to ten days 
That's what we're looking at. It's also worth noting that the Climate Prediction Center does have much of the West well above average temperatures likely or possible over Nevada, over California. Also, Florida, very warm, and Southern Texas, very warm. But notice here, not as far chances above normal for the Midwest and for the Northern Plains and even for the Pacific Northwest early on. But once we get into the 8 to 14 day forecast, you can see here, possibly above average and also across the desert southwest and again for florida really going to be warm and that's troubling for the gulf of mexico these waters i just checked earlier today the waters in the gulf of mexico are already running three to four degrees celsius above normal and we're running six degrees celsius ahead of last year as far as those sea surface temperatures so definitely the gulf of mexico warming up at an alarming hurry rate and that's not what we want for the hurricane season coming up which i will have out on may 21st and speaking of announcements my third atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook will be released on wednesday may 21st at 3 p.m pacific daylight time 4 p.m mountain daylight time 6 p.m eastern daylight time you do not want to miss it you guys really liked my last upload on the hurricane season which I, I, I'm just blessed about. So thank you all for checking that out and sharing that. But I'll have another one out coming soon on the 21st. Now, there has been some changes. My first routine tropical weather outlook now will has been moved up to now May 23rd and runs through November 1st. And that's because we are keeping an eye on the main development, not the main development region, but the, uh, the Caribbean as well as the southern Gulf of Mexico with some tropical development towards the end of May. And so therefore, we have moved this up a couple more days. So now it looks like on Friday, the 23rd of May, we will be doing a our first Atlantic Hurricane uh, Outlook and Discussion, which is going to be exciting. Now, this includes rapid updates and live streams. If necessary, if we have any named storm that is about to make landfall, we will per be providing you that on the channel. But otherwise, if you do, did like today's detailed weather forecast, please consider subscribing. You can check out my YouTube channel now today. Of course, this is a snapshot. I have like 19.6 thousand subscribers now. So this is kind of an outdated version here, but you get the idea. That's my channel. And also follow me on Twitter. Link in the description below this video if you want to follow me. And also check out the Weather Force Discord server. There is a link in the description below this video if you want to participate today. It is very, very exciting. We have already 30 members in the server, so this, again, is an outdated version of that, but it gives you an idea that this is what my server looks like. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in to today's video and also checking out my last two hurricane forecasts. Those two videos, by the way, have more than 30,000 views in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I'm just blessed. So thank you all for checking that out. All right. There will be a link in the description leading to that Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook too, um, if you all want to check that out. But otherwise, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.